Hello, Prince. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Don. <sighs> How come you guys are late? <laughs> I've been here since 10 o'clock. <laughs> Only cloaked. <laughs> he just couldn't see me. The week was fine, Prince. Good and busy. And uh, <clears throat> it was good. It was good all along. It was good. I'd made some... Um, changes in the last scene of the animation and it looks good I like it and I changed the voice on the last scene of the animation and I think it's better hello Debbie <laughs> oh yeah yes Debbie you're late I've been here since 10 o'clock I've had so many cocos <laughs> And I feel my nose is growing, <laughs> Pinocchio, <laughs> because, yes, I was late. <laughs> but you guys weren't here, so I couldn't be late. So we're all on time. I just wasn't there as I usually am the week before. I mean, was the week before. <laughs> Hello, Jamie. <laughs> I know, Debbie, I'm pulling your leg. I just... I just tuned in. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't sure if I want to have cocoa or if I want to have tea. So I made both of them. <laughs> That's why. And I realized that unless I'm on, you guys wouldn't even be on. So I wasn't really worried that anybody's waiting. So... <laughs> Ah, so okay. How was your week, guys? Tell me what's going on. What's on your mind? What happened? How things are? Have you been able to sort things out? Do I need uh, heavier glasses? No. Okay. I gotta clean this up somehow. I thought I did. This is what the ties are good for. If you ever wonder why men wear ties, because they need something to clean their glasses with once in a while. <laughs> there we go. Especially if they don't have anything nearby. That's better. Oh, hello, Brenda. Good to see you, dear. I'm on. Hello, dear. Happy Saturday to you too, Brenda. <laughs> As you know, we can always, I can always talk, but we have now dedicated these Saturday and Sunday talks for your questions because, as you know, we have over 300 videos on the YouTube channel. And of course, my site has the books and all that, so there are lots of material for you if you wanted to know about things that we usually talk about. But we dedicate Saturday and Sunday for question and answers. So specific questions that you have. And um, then we explore that together. So I wait for your questions regarding your relationships or your breakup or matters of thoughts and consciousness, desire, ego, and fear, how they interact and react and influence our lives and how, we, how they interfere or are involved in the day-to-day -day negotiation of what we go through every day. 
So John says, any tip on managing time? Honestly, the only tip that is really works is just get off your butt and do it. I mean, that's the only thing. <laughs> because, you see, thought is time. And if you really want to have more time to make sure your thoughts are with you, with your body, where you are, what you're facing. Because once your thoughts start roaming around in your consciousness, in the memory, in the past, the time is not going to be visible for you because it's not in relation to what's happening. So you think actually you have lots of time because you don't realize it's actually passing because you're in the past and the past doesn't relate to what you're doing right now. So in your mind, you're just roaming around and you're doing something. So you feel like you're actually using time wisely because you're doing something, you're resolving matters, you're fixing things. But what are you fixing? A dead situation that is in the memory and no need to fix it because it doesn't even exist. But you think you're in your memory doing something and that causes you to actually not realize the time is passing by, to think that you're using your time wisely and in fact, you're really not noticing that what you're doing is of no use anyhow. So, the only way to have more time is to stop wasting time. You can't create more hours in the day, but you can create more available time to you by simply stop wasting time by being in your memory or worry about things that hasn't happened or creating a certain kind of a press on yourself by imagining or thinking that something is wrong. Because when you do that, you simply create a situation which paralyzes you because you, you create an illusion that not everything is perfect for you. And every little bit that you find, you think that's, that means your life is not perfect. Therefore, it causes you to not be efficient. And when you're not efficient, you're wasting time. When you're wasting time, you don't have enough time. Basically, something for you to think about. Now, let's see. Prince says, Sir, when energy is extended to another person, how much control does the receiving person have over the effects of energies that flow through them? Does it inevitably influence how we feel, think? What happened? I lost you. Does it inevitably influence how we feel, think, and act? How susceptible are we to these energies? For example, negative energy makes one angry, angry mind and positive energy makes one feel happy in mind. Yes, of course. We absorb. There is a there is a section I have in one of the talks about that we absorb energy. And that energy has a quality that you react to it. If you look at that video, it will be more in detail. Here I just touch on it. It's like saying if a dirty water of a puddle splashes on you is the same as a clean water splashes on you. Imagine the reaction you will get when a clean water splash somebody's watering the lawn with the hose and accidentally some splashes on you. You get startled, you jump away, but quickly you know the quality of water was clean. So it doesn't really, other than that you got a little wet, it doesn't concern you. It doesn't make you angry. It makes you concerned that you're wet. 
that's it. No health hazards, no, uh, your clothes won't get dirty, and these are all things that makes it tolerable. And maybe even if it's a hot weather, maybe even fun, or you'll say, hey, you know, and that's it. But if it happened to be a car passing by and hit the puddle, which is, you know, murky water in it, you actually do the same reaction to jump away, but you're now concerned about the quality of that garbage that hits your clothes and your hygiene and cleaning and so on. Same thing with energy. When you pass by people, everybody has a certain kind of an energy that they're ex extending. And because we each feel people's energy, it is important for you to have a strong energy you be extending all the time. And that comes through meditation and understanding of the relationship with the nature and nature's energy. So when you have this powerful energy always extended from the energy flows that from one end of the universe is always traveling to the, end of the, the other end of the universe and in the meantime passes through you. Once it passes through you, if you have this attention to actually ride on it and expand it and extend it by letting it boost itself and have this full attention of your relationship with the, with the nature and understand that there's a strong energy like a big, humongous, powerful river that you have, that you're extending, then the other energy of the people, which are the smaller rivers, won't be able to penetrate into your river that is extended. So that's the only thing that you should be able to focus on and practice. So all these bad energies that people have for all different reasons, their mentality, their beliefs, or their intentions, or negativeness, or nastiness, or whatever it is, or simply they're in trouble, or they're in thoughts, and their energy is not, it's not necessarily they're extending it, it's just not filtered properly when it comes through them. It gets murky. A clean, pure energy is coming from the end of the universe and passes through somebody. And if it's a murky water, that energy also becomes murky. That's the intention. That's the feeling that person has in his own thoughts. That's the uh, situation where he is wallowing or swimming in, which affects the energy that passing through him or the intention of the person. So for all that, you can't control that energy that's coming, but you can control the amount of energy that you're emanating, that you are extending. And that is like not allowing the dust get to you, basically. And at the same time, you're, you're affecting other people with positive, powerful, helpful energy that helps them with their problems. Because you are also emanating, extending certain energy that affects other people. So imagine if somebody passes by you and extending good energy, you feel good, better than what you wear. And if you're not feeling good, you feel better because of that energy. Same thing with you. If you're extending good energy out because you want to just make sure no bad energy comes to you, at the same time, you're helping other people to feel your grace, your good energy to help them develop and grow. And that is basically helps both sides, yourself and the nature, community, society, and other people. Abhishek says, I feel not confident and not comfortable around rich people. And I'm not usually an underconfident or fearful. So how is it that so? Well, because you have defined value of yourself, of people, to things. You have come and live too much in a physical world, and for you everything is related to the physical existence of something and how that physical existence of that something, how, what value that thing has, and you feel, or somehow come to believe, that the value of things out there is what you should attach yourself to, to feel valuable. And with that belief, you feel the rich people who have lots of things, car, clothes, money, and this and that, therefore their value must be higher 
than the one who doesn't have the car and things and money and clothes and all that. Because you have come to understand or agree or accept somehow, who knows how, that what gives value to life and humanity and people are things, is things. You know, a nice briefcase or if it's a lady, nice handbag, a nice clothing, what she's wearing, what he's wearing, the car he's driving or the house that they have, the money, the things have become the source of value and worth of a living being, which if you think of it, it's the living being who actually created all those things. So how could those things have more value than the human beings who actually are the cause and the source of all these things that have been developed? Whether you are involved in creating all these things in the world directly or indirectly, every one of us are part of this puzzle. And if I wasn't here, if you weren't here, things would have been different. Maybe the things that are actually the way they are, they wouldn't be. So whether you are directly involved in producing those things, creating those things or not, it's, it's not the issue. The issue is that your presence, your energy in this world is part of why and how this whole world and whole availability of things and the whole advancement is. We're all connected, whether by direct physical effect of what we do or by presence of our energy and the way it affects other things and other people, whether we know it or not. So you should focus on the fact that the value of yours has got nothing to do with things. Therefore, the rich people have nothing over you. Because you take their clothes away, you take their money away, you take their car and house away. They're no different than you or anybody else. It is only you who makes them look in your own mind that they're better than you because you're focusing on things that they have. Focus on them. Focus on them. Not what they have. Simply focus on their personality, their respect, their manners, what they say, how they say it, how they treat you, how humane they are. If they are selfish, their value is low. I don't care what they have. If they are arrogant and disrespectful, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what they have. They're nincompoops. If they think they actually bought into the fact that because they have money or they have cars, they have this or clothes, then that has given them a certain value. That means they actually are hanging their worth and value on things which means they don't have much value. They're very insecure themselves. So you gotta focus on the source, not on what's hanging on him. You know, when you look at a woman or a man and you see, you know, the, the, the lady has earrings and, you know, thingies and all hanging beautiful glow, gold and maybe and bracelets or whatnot. And the same look, if she has a twin and doesn't have these things, she's not wearing these things, suddenly you kind of think this one who's got all these glitters and things, um, blings on her, she's a more educated, more classy, or more valuable. But it's the same person, because you're focusing on the things that has made her look like she's more. Same thing with the, the men, if they have a watch or a car, then you may think, oh, they're more. But focus on them. Not what they're sitting in, the car. Focus on the person and understand that the value of a person equals to his respect and compassion and the way he treats others and what they're saying, what their mentality is, what, not what they have. If you focus on that, then you'll be more comfortable that they're all the same as you. Believe me, the same person that is wealthy and your mind, you think he's got or she's got all these things that makes you feel he or she is valuable. They got to go home. They got to eat. They got to go to the bathroom and they can't hold it any longer than you can. <laughs> and they got to have to brush their teeth in the morning. They got to sleep. And again, they got to eat. And the same needs are there. 
So their value is not about, is not about what they have, it's about how they react to life, how they interact with other people, what their energy is about, how they make other people feel comfortable, and how make other people feel respected, and so on and so forth. It's about the interaction of the energy, not what they have what not. So, the rich one or the poor one, same respect. It's only about how they negotiate life, how they interact with the other people, how they affect other people with the energy that we just talked about. And that's what might make some person, some people, valuable or not. The way their energy is extended and how they make other people feel and affect other people, the community and the society and the world in general. <clears throat> Shamim asks, why do you feel loss even though a relationship was not positive but toxic? Well, we have discussed that over 300 videos on the channel, YouTube, they'll be much more efficient if you look at the list of why you miss your ex. Just put in miss your ex or ex in my channel and there'll be many videos coming. But basically, what you feel you are actually um, lost is because <clears throat> And before you were in a relationship, you had a certain way of living, a certain way of doing things. That's called the order, the order of your life. You know, you would get up, do certain things, and go and do certain jobs, and have certain friends, and certain way of spending your day, and certain plans. But when you come into a relationship, your order, however it was, is interfering with the other person's order and this person's order when they were single they had their way of living is interfering with your order and it takes a while until you eventually compromise and create a similar or a compatible or a compromised order in this relationship you give up some things you change some things and so does the other person and so on and now you have a new order and after a while you get used to this order this becomes your way of living because you changed it. Now, when you break up, this that you changed to this order, this new order, this is no longer the way it was. It breaks up. And you're not used to the way you were before being in a relationship. So again, you got to used to get used to this old order, which everything was fine and you liked it, now it's breaking up, broken up this relationship. Now it gonna, it's going to take time. And until then, you feel something is lost. Something was bad. I mean, something is bad now. Even though if it was toxic, but you were used to it. And you're just missing your conditioning. And in a short while, once you get focused on your day and the things you got to do, again, the order will come to your own order and your conditioning changes, your life takes shape the way you want it and things will subside things will change <laughs> then there was <laughs> there were times that we were waiting minutes for questions and i'm delighted i can't even breathe now <laughs> it's one after the other <laughs> good for you <laughs> use use the time efficiently and that's wonderful mara says do you believe in bioenergy therapy? Can someone change my aura or whatever and change my life? Or is it only based on my life in my mind? Thank you. And she says, you helped me a lot <laughs> before. Okay. Mara, you are the boss. You are the master. No one can make you feel bad if you don't allow it, if you don't want it, if you don't think it, if you don't abs ab absorb it. Like we talked a few minutes ago, if you didn't hear it, I'll repost this and you will be able to hear the energy part. If you have this tremendous 
ability and power and flow of energy extended from you, the other people's negativity cannot affect you. So the same way, other people's way of talking and thinking can help you to realize something and become more positive, perhaps like what we're doing here. But in fact, and at the end of the day, you're the boss. Your thoughts is what makes you think who you are, what you are, what is missing in your life, or what nothing is missing in your life. And often, there are people who nothing is missing in their life, but they conjure up something. They pick on something. They feel like maybe something is missing. or should be missing because it's not exactly as they wanted it to be. Therefore, they create that to become a handicap for them, which is, in fact, an illusion. There is no handicap. It's all how you think of yourself. You can quickly think of yourself that I'm not valuable, and you become not valuable. And if you think of yourself, I'm on top of the world, and I have the total confidence in reaching what I want in life and interacting with anyone that I want because I know my worth and value because I am not about what I'm wearing or what I'm driving or how I look like. I'm about my energy. And if you have mastered that understanding, then it doesn't matter who is feeling what about you or you think what is perfect, what is not perfect in your way of understanding or your way of thinking, because these are all thoughts. You can change the thoughts because you're the master of making those thoughts. And if your thought says you're an asshole, then you feel you're an asshole because your thought says that and you believe your thoughts. But you got to understand, just not every thought that I conjure up or comes to my mind or I happen to focus on is true. I don't have to take it seriously. I don't have to believe in it. I don't have to act on it. I don't have to let it define me. And the same token, you can think, I am so wonderful and I'm such a good person. And you really are. You acted that way. And that is where the confidence comes out. That's where your abilities comes out. That's where you can really see yourself because what you are is how you feel and how you feel is how you think. And if you think correctly about yourself and not make things to become something when they're actually nothing, then you're in control of your life. And by thoughts, you can change your energy. By changing your energy, you can change your influence. And by changing your influence, you can accept and you can achieve anything and any kind of a world and life that you can create for yourself. And people will follow you because you believe in yourself and your belief in yourself and your confidence in yourself makes them to feel there is something wonderful here independent of what you're driving what you're wearing what you look like and so on and so forth because people are drawn to your energy not to your money not to your looks not to what you have or what you don't have so in other words you are the only one who can make yourself see the truth of what life is what you are and how you want it to be shaped rather than what thoughts somebody puts into your mind which is negative or what thoughts appear in your mind or how you may think or rationalize something or how you want some things to be and it's not that way and you create that to be a certain handicap for yourself. You just created that. There is no handicap. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing missing in you because there's so many people out there that they wish to have had a minuscule of what you're having and they dream for that to be the, the destination of their life the most cherished achievement in their life and for you you don't even notice it. so it's all about how we perceive how we think and so make your thinking correctly value yourself love yourself appreciate your energy know who you are and based on that Go conquer the world and get whatever you want. People follow your energy and your confidence, nothing else. Now, Don Diego asks, how do you... Hang on, guys. I want to have a little cocoa. Gee, my mouth is dry. 
I thought this is a social event. And there is no fruits, there is no nothing. I'm talking my head off. Have somebody bring some tea. <laughs> okay. Now, Don Diego says, how do you know what should be given value? Is this just subjective? Or are there certain absolute things that should be valued for a better life? Naturally, if you're at a table with all kinds of food in it, you approach something that somehow you feel it looks, smells, and possibly if you taste it, tastes according to what sits well with you. Your reaction to it is positive, calms you down, makes you feel good, it tastes good in your mouth, good quality food. So those are the things that you approach, so you give value to those. The other things that you don't like, too salty or too spicy or too fatty, too oily, or whatever it is that you don't like about their looks or their taste, may be good for somebody who thinks that's good, but you decide your reaction to it, physically and mentally, emotionally, how it makes you feel, how it sits well with you, with your mind or with your body, how your body reacts to it, your tummy doesn't feel good about it, your tongue doesn't taste it so well, doesn't like that taste, or the way it looks doesn't hit you well, then that's the one you don't approach. So basically, it's not about, that's how you give value to things. Otherwise, there's no set things that you say, okay, this is valuable because they said it's valuable. That's not valuable because they said, no, it's all depending what kind of a preference you have. But of course, there are things in life that is bad regardless of who thinks is good. Because everybody has been having different conditioning and different abilities in life. For example, if somebody goes and, and um, spends his life and thinks the only way to feel good about life is to get high, or be on drugs, well, that's bad regardless of who thinks is good. Because the one who thinks is good is addicted. That's the only way he can, that's the only capability he has in order to make him feel good. But it's bad anyhow, it's wrong. If somebody goes, you know, robs somebody else, well, maybe he thinks it gives him value, but it's wrong no matter what he thinks. So there are certain things that are actually wrong regardless. We're not talking about those. Because those have to do with Humanity, respect to life and respect to um, what nature is all about and the laws of the community and the tribe that you live in and you've accepted that these are the social values and social lives and so on and so forth. We're not talking about those. We're talking about your personal things that you feel if it's valuable. And that's based on how it makes you feel, how you react to it. And if it's going to be some kind of a stepping stone for you to get closer to what you want to achieve in life or not. That's how you give value to things, not based on everything else that somebody else likes or doesn't like. You know, that's the extent of my understanding of a question, unless uh, uh, I, did, I didn't understand it uh, completely. Maggie. Hello, Maggie. How are you, dear? Good to see you here. Raja. Raja says, should I get married or stay single? <laughs> How do I know? <laughs> How do I know? The question of attachment is what you should solve or discuss with yourself to make that decision. You get married, you get attached, and you... you need to, or you hope that that person that you're attached to is in harmony with your way of living or you are in harmony with her way of living and you create that new order that we talked about. 
And if you don't get married, you always may wonder, how would it be if I was attached and I would feel a sense of belonging and I would have a purpose in life, if that would be what you define as a purpose. So you have to understand that yourself. And of course, we human beings are programmed for procreation and that is something that will come to your mind too. And then of course, attachment, intimacy, sexual um, experiences and all these is what attracts you to make that decision. So make sure that the decision that you make to get married is not because only on the physical experiences of motivated by sex and intimacy and to, to have a girlfriend, to have a wife and fulfill that image of a perfect life that you've put in your head uh, through your upbringing and the purpose and the reason for your marriage would be on the fact that you guys have understood each other, can communicate well with each other, can cooperate well with each other, can try to be in harmony, understand each other's order and become a team rather than I want to get married so I can have a wife and tell her what to do so I feel good and big and great and feel valuable because I am the man now. Or if you're a woman, you feel, you know, you want to get married so you can tell your husband what to do, what not to do, and have somebody go and get stuff for you and, you know, provide for you and so on and so forth. If these are the intentions, they're not the real intentions because if it's only physical attraction, physical intention, intentions, then the benefits that we just talked about or similar things like that is your motivation to get married. Well, they will run off. They will, they will wear off. And after a while, you're not that sexually hot for someone that you've been with all the time. And you think, now I'm not that hot for her anymore or she's not that hot for you anymore. Therefore, there's something wrong with the marriage, so I've got to go and get divorced and go get, with, you know, get another girl. Because that will happen always with any girl, and if you're a lady, that will happen always with any guy. It's not the fact that there's anything wrong with your guy or there's anything wrong with your wife, with your girl. It's the fact that you didn't bond on the consciousness level. You only bonded on physical level, and physical level always becomes not so interesting anymore and becomes something that you've experienced and then... It's not as it was at the beginning. One reason for that, now we're getting a little deeper in here because that kind of puts me in a different line. One reason in the, is, that, is that we have to understand the difference between happiness, joy, and pleasure. Now, listen to this. If you define happiness coming from pleasure then you'll never be happy because pleasure is what brings boredom look if you have a dessert or if you have an apple or if you have something that some experience whatever it is and you eat that and you say oh so delicious that's joy. You're happy. Feel good. But now thought comes into the picture. So, oh, I like this. I want to have more of this. I want to have this all the time. And that, now that the thought came into the picture, the joy, which was just what it was, you just experienced it, had a bite into it, and it was great. But you don't stop there. Thought comes into the picture and says, now, I want to have more of this because I want to turn this to be permanent. A joy, a temporary, I want to turn it into permanent. I want to have more of it all the time and turning the joy into pleasure. And when you turn it into pleasure, it becomes all the time monotonous and you get bored of the pleasure. You still want pleasure, but you want other pleasures because you turn this into something that is no longer joy. It's a thing that it's always going to be how you want it. And because of that, you turn it into pleasure. 
you become bored of it so if you understand that your happiness with yourself or with someone should be based on what you guys bond on consciousness level and not based on the fact that you want to be married because you want to have pleasure of that kind of a image that the society has put into your head if you don't get married for these reasons then you will bond on conscious level and you joy every time you guys are doing something together because you look at it as what it is rather than I want to own it and make this permanent so I'm going to marry to her because I, I like her and the reason for that to marry her is because I want to have her all the time that's a physical connection and possession and that becomes a pleasure for you I got it and I have it and then it becomes boredom then you want a divorce but if you want to marry her because you guys can actually build something together see each other as you are the way you are every day of it and make it to be new every time by not trying to keep changing each other conforming into something turning into something what you would prefer to be perfect for the way you think and that becomes a pleasure and pleasure pleasure leads to boredom so if you understand all that can put that together properly then you will know if you should get married and you're getting married for the right reasons or you shouldn't or you're getting married for the wrong reasons if you can be aware of it and discuss that with your girl and perhaps you'll have a better chance to keep that marriage joyful and be happy because of the internal connections within you two than you've turned the joy into pleasure and that you think brings happiness but it doesn't because then it becomes monotonous and it doesn't it's not dynamic it's not new anymore it becomes old and the pleasure leads to boredom something to for you to think about uh Maggie do you believe in love to a right person at a wrong time ouch let me read it again do you believe in love to a right person at the wrong time Uh, this wrong time is a big word. I don't know. The wrong time means that person is not available. It's the right person. You guys hit it off well, but he's married or he's. Busy. I don't. I don't understand what that wrong. Because that the whole key is in that wrong time. What time is the wrong time? Because if two people are both free and available, and they fall in love, it's the right time. As long as they're right for each other, which they are connecting in the conscious level, consciousness level, as we talked about this stuff that we talked about, then and they're free and available. But what's that hindrance? What is the time? Uh, that's the part. I don't. Not enough information, Maggie. <laughs> Rudrani why it happens a person loves me but seldom or seldom seldom show or gives me the love feeling what I deserve what you deserve comes from your thoughts your thoughts tells you this is what you deserve but what is his thoughts does he feel you deserve this too <laughs> You know, you may deserve lots of attention and love and respect that you want, but maybe you, if you don't behave in such a way that the, also that person feels respected and loved, then what you think you deserve is not in line with how you behave to deserve what you think you deserve in the mind of the other person. So you got to first ask yourself, what is the basis of what you think you deserve? Is it just because you demand it or you actually are interacting with that person in a way that he thinks he deserves to make you feel in his mind that you also deserve what you think you deserve? 
So this business of deserve, it brings us to the subject of entitlement, that some of us think, you know, women or men, that we are entitled to something. I'm entitled to have the most gorgeous woman to walk and knock on my door and say, here I am, please take me, I love you. I mean, what entitlement do I have? What did I do? Do I, you know, do I have any bonding and consciousness level with her? Do I know her? If I feel like I'm entitled to have the most beautiful horse in the world or billions of dollars or have my jet ready in the in the airport. Okay, these are things that you know everybody may think I'm entitled. What why are we entitled to that? You know? I'm only entitled to experience life and learn it and understand it and learn how to manage it and interact with it and become the boss of my life. That's what I'm entitled of. And that only happens if I really focus on how to make that happen how to negotiate my boat on this ocean because I am never able to control life. I am never able to control the ocean not to be wavy or stormy or create imbalance or create oscillation tipping over my boat. I cannot stop the waves from behaving the way they are. I cannot stop the wind to create waves in the ocean and I cannot stop all those elements but what I can control I cannot control that but I, what I can control is to become a good captain an expert in being able to navigate my boat and so it won't be imbalanced and capsized that's the only thing I can be in control of how to negotiate these waves how to be a good captain and keep the balance of my boat is the only expertise I can train on and I'd be aware of it, pay full attention to it, learn it, and become the boss of my boat. That I'm entitled to. And I should work towards it to get what I'm entitled to, what I think I'm entitled to, because that's about me being the boss of my life. But I cannot control how the ocean moves. I should learn how to negotiate what life throws at me. That's when I can bring control, happiness, and power and be able to use that as a fuel to negotiate anything in my life because I cannot know what's going to come towards me. So same thing with you. You say you deserve it. You can't control how other people interact with you, behave with you, but you can control how you react to it. And if that behavior is not good according to what you expect and how you, what you have been putting out in way of reacting and interacting with that person, how you treat them, then you decide that that's not good enough for me. So it's not about why someone doesn't show affection. It's about how you are dealing with that which makes you comfortable or not comfortable. If not comfortable, you know, tell the guy and say, look, you're not affectionate. And I'm an affectionate person. I don't like this. You're playing games. You want to make it yourself look big or important. Or maybe you love me so much and you're afraid to show affection that I would think that you're not a big deal because you're paying attention to me. So don't be afraid of that. I will not think that you're nobody because you're showing love and affection and emotion to me. I will appreciate it. Don't be afraid of that. Maybe that's why the guy doesn't show you any affection. Either way, you got to tell him. Don't let it be a mystery. Tell him, listen, what gives? <laughs> why are not you giving me more attention that I deserve, you know? And then he's going to say, what do you mean you deserve? What about me? You don't do this. You don't do that. You don't do this. And then you begin to understand, hey, maybe... The reason he doesn't pay attention to me because I don't do these things. I don't show this kind of affection to him. Maybe then you can understand each other. Or maybe he tells you, listen, because I really love you so much and I feel like if I pay so much attention to you, you will feel I'm not so important because I like you. You know, some people are like that. So that's why they don't show affection because they're not sure of their own, you know, how you can handle it. Or if they 
if they will lose you because they show so much interest. So these are things that you can discuss and figure it out. Daniel says, why is, gee, you guys are getting your, your money's worth today, aren't you? I, it's, it's fantastic. All these questions are coming without me asking for it. Good, wonderful. We have a good meeting. Why is it so hard to move on from a past concept of the self, whether in the context of a partner or the self itself? Let me make sure I understand your question because it could be interpreted many different ways. Why is it so hard to move on from a past concept of the self? Well, you're talking about you considered yourself in a certain way and you conditioned yourself through life as seeing yourself, your, the image of you in your mind in a certain way and now you think why is it so hard to move away from it if that's the question well it's hard because you've conditioned yourself for so long to see yourself as what you see as the image that you see of yourself that you created of yourself in your mind and now that conditioning has become part of you and you think that what you've conditioned yourself is you well in fact that's a conditioning you brought about to shape you as it is right now due to your needs to be like that for the, I don't know, purposes that you needed to be like that to negotiate life in the community that you live in or in the opportunities that existed and you had to turn into that. But if you do that for long and you make that to be you, then that is your order, your new way of being. And that's going to maybe take a while for you to change that but it can be changed as long as you recognize that now you want to have a different image because every day the way you are the way you think is defining you the way you are and the way you think is based on what you want to do let's say you walk into a store and the image you have of yourself is the image of a shopper you're shopping this you're looking at this and you're behaving differently you're, you know you're, you're and, and that's the image. But if you're in a store and you're a salesperson and somebody walks in, you have an image of a salesman, a salesperson. If you're a teacher, you have an image of a teacher. If you're talking to your mother, you have an image of a daughter. If you're talking to your son or if you have children, you have an image of a mother. If you're talking to your boyfriend or a husband, you have an image of a wife or a girlfriend. If you're talking with your girlfriend, you have an image of a friend. If you're consoling them, you have an image of a consultant or maybe a counselor. If you're getting help from someone, maybe you have an image of someone who is seeking that knowledge. So all these images through the day, depending on what you want to do, you grab them, you turn yourself into that, and that's the image you have. And as soon as you finish with it, you kind of separate yourself from it. You have a different image, you know? Uh, so these images are what you may think of yourself to be at a different time just as you can you're able to do this well you're able also to change you your image of the self that you're talking about you figure out what that self how that self has been brought about depending and based on what you went through and what you needed to have the image to do what you wanted to do and you created that self and suddenly that self that image state and you see yourself as that image and you can change that image depending on what the situation and circumstance are now whether in the context of a partner or the self itself in the context of the partner the self that you think of yourself again is the image of you think of yourself because what is self in a very nutshell just i don't want to get into it because it's a long discussion this one the self is is, is you, your center, your whole of your consciousness. Every experience that you have in here, the field of the known, where your thoughts are born from it, 
based on what's accumulated here through the experiences and the knowledge and you know the things that you've gone through and you've been exposed to your religions and traditions and customs and whatever you read and whatever you saw and all these things that's the field of the known and based on that field of the known your thoughts are born from that field of the known and so all of that the whole thing your dogmas and everything else that's you that's your center that's yourself yeah now if you change the image that you have of yourself then you use a different part of all that information pertaining to that image and yourself becomes a fragment of what really you are because you just separated yourself in order to use that image to get whatever it is that you're negotiating with me with, with in that circumstance so in relationship it's also depending on what you see what you seek in that relationship and maybe you altered yourself because of what you were hoping to build or get from that relationship so these are all what you should consider and you can move away from it by recognizing how you have created them and now you can dismantle them or change them or modify them but these are all fragments of you because there's so many images that we use during the day and we abandon them and use a different image different circumstances different time of the different the thing that we are doing so same thing you can recognize recognize that and be the whole of you or to be a fragment of all of you in a different circumstances and of course it all also depends on how the other person in a relationship is interacting with you which causes you to want to have a certain image or just simply have no image if you want to be free and not be bothered have no image if you have no image then you're free nothing can get in under your skin because you try to protect that image and that image becomes more important than you and that's the beginning of suffering because you now are after protecting a fictitious image that it doesn't even exist but you now value it more than who you are and what you are because you are you have created an image of yourself in your mind and you want to protect that and for that you suffer to protect that because so many other people interact with it differently and it may or may not be the way you want your image to be affected or influenced or interacted with Rudrani said yes sir I also think that he just afraid of showing his emotion because he had a bad breakup with another girl he rarely he really cares for me sometimes he shows his feelings for me and again he covered his himself he always says he likes me I just want to know how I can hold and maintain this relationship longer for future just just a stop needing a contract signed contract what do you want the guy to do every day to come and say I love you I love you I love you so you can be sure he shows it the way he does and if you understand what you just told me which means you understand it then let it go why are you expecting a constant affirmation from him to you that he loves you still loves you it's, not, it's an assurance and affirmation that is bothering you it's like saying I want a contract that's why people get married and they think just because they got married they signed something and they exchange vows and that's now it's going to last nothing lasts because a piece of paper it's about how you deal with each other how you can understand each other how you can bond with each other on consciousness level and stop thinking that their words constant words or some piece of paper or some assurance will actually make things to stay permanent 
the whole reason for our suffering, one of the reasons for suffering is that we want to turn temporary to permanent, impermanent to permanent, and that brings the suffering. Stop trying to turn things into permanent. Nothing is permanent in this life. Even our lives is not permanent. So trying to make fragments of this whole life permanent from impermanent, it's the way to open the doors of suffering. You always wonder, you always worry, you always want this, you always want that. You're never sure, you want affirmation. And that's why you will not be enjoying you're turning enjoyment into pleasure because you want to have that enjoyment, that joy all the time. And now you want, you want him to constantly confirm and affirm you or write something every time and come and show it to you. Hey, today, remember, I signed this, so I love you. Now, remember, I signed this, I love you every day and because you need to turn a joy into pleasure, which means you want it to turn it into permanence. And to do that, is what's gonna cause you feel anxiety because you create a situation where you need this in order to feel happy. Don't, just be happy, just enjoy it. And as long as it lasts, it lasts. And it doesn't, it doesn't. You cannot force it to be assured it's gonna last for this long or that long. Just be in the moment, enjoy it, appreciate it, and don't chase some kind of a Permanence or assurance for permanence just brings you more suffering <laughs> or, or more worries <laughs> or concern. Nardine says, "Is my ex narcissist?" I, I don't, I don't know because I have. No oh, there is another one, another information here. She says, we broke up because he was flirting with his friend and that he keeps contacting me every once in a while. And then he came up to me after two years and kept texting me daily and flirting daily. for almost two months and then he said he has a girl I was like why would you keep texting me and all that and kept me left with hope he was like people bang and don't have feelings or hope I am not quite sure what the ending of it mean but look <laughs> Whether he's a narcissist or not, who gives a damn? All it matters is that he's not treating you well, so walk away, move away. Be in control of your life. Someone is not respecting you, is not loyal. Bye-bye. That's the end of it. No worries. He doesn't need to have a label for him. He probably is an asshole. That's it. <laughs> so that's all you need to know. <laughs> as long as they're not treating you well and they're not honest with you and... That means they're shallow, they're weak. They're not even sure if they're of any worthy quality and they're just jumping from you know here to there. So that's not a kind of a relationship you're looking for. So therefore, move on. Just don't pay attention to the person. Danielle says, what makes it so hard for some people to accept joy and pleasure? Because they're not with the moment. They're trying to make the impermanent to permanent and they simply are not haven't learned what life is all about they're just trying to hold on attach themselves and create psychological security by knowing that they have this so they feel they're more forget all that don't want to be more just see what it is in the moment that you're with and if it's good, the next day maybe it's good. And if it's not, then you decide what to do with it. Should you keep it or let it go? Uh, Vartan Jamgochian 
Good saying, don't ask contract, especially in the days. That's right. Shamim Ashraf Lol, I don't know what that is for. I wish I knew because I would I would need a laugh right now. You guys putting me to work today continuously and that's wonderful. He now this is he keeps Nardin says he keeps sitting at the places that I sit because we are in the same university and he annoys me. Just go sit somewhere else. He's an idiot. And obviously he's got no good qualities not respecting you. He's just trying to be funny. And some people, when they don't have enough confidence, they keep trying to be annoying in order to create attention. Just just move away, sit somewhere else. It's no big deal. You can get used to a new place. No problems. Shamim Ashraf says, have you always been so positive, full of good energy? <laughs> I think I have. I think I have. It's, 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 you know, everybody has ups and downs too, but in general, when I think it through, yes. That's the only way. There's two forces, negative and positive. Which one do I want to be? I don't want the negative. I know how it feels. And what's my alternative? This one. I want to grow this one. I want to become more powerful. I want to be the river that has got more of a power flowing through life ahead of me so if there are other negativities coming from other people, their energy, their flow, their river, I want my river to be in full force of positive, see all the positiveness of the possibilities as much as possible so I can overcome this. Otherwise, what's the choice I have? The other choice would be just roll over and die when there are things that are not going the way I want it to go. I don't want that. I'm here to live. I'm not here to die. Death will come when it comes. I'm not going to expedite it. So I'm not going to be here. I'm not here to roll over and die. I'm here to live. To live, i got to be powerful in the way of seeing possibilities in order to deal with what I'm facing with. I'm not going to easily allow or at all allow negativity get to me for too long. And if it does, I wash it with the power of nature, power of energy, power of positivity, power of hopes, power of ability to figure things out and deal with this, negotiate with things and run with it and go forward and explode this power of energy, the river that I want to be in front of me to open the ways for me. Now that's what the energy you want to extend. The energy from the universe is coming always from one end to the other end. When it passes through you, use that energy and be positive and let it open the ways for you and find hopes and possibilities and negotiate with the things that you're facing. That's the only choice we have. Otherwise, you can't control what the life brings to you and throws at you, but you can control how to you react to it, how to find ways and to deal and negotiate with it, and then move forward from there. That's the only choice I have. I'm not going to roll over and die so easily. So let us flow and grow and let other things help other things advance and grow and develop including ourselves by first send the energy forward send the possibilities believe in possibilities believe in the fact that you can deal with things and you can handle things you can manage things and you are here to live not in order to roll over and be crushed by the life events itself you got to keep going forward. Now, <sighs> Nadine, keep ignoring him. Don't be weak. Keep ignoring him. And if it bothers you, go to the dean and say, this asshole bothers me. That's it. Finish it. Um, Shami. <laughs> Ah, yes, okay, yeah, I see, Shamim, yeah, that was actually good. So, could someone tell me what time is it? Is someone, um, Prince, you're in the West Coast. Could you, could you throw me the time? I think I've, 
spoken my head off. Mmm. It's 12.02. Okay, yeah, it's perfect timing for us to end our Saturday talk. I enjoyed it. It was good. Lots of questions. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And, um... Ah, uh, Murtaza. Last one more question. Let me see. Can you forgive? Murtaza says, Can you forgive anyone who cheated on you, although you were so sure that they can't ever do that, but they show you that they didn't mean to, but they did cheat it because they wanted to? distract themselves from you but they aren't able to and now coming back what do you <laughs> so you're trying to justify if the guy cheated you you should take him back or not <laughs> listen <laughs> it's up to you you decide if you think the guy is going to behave or you want to forgive him forgive him if you don't don't but there is no way I can tell you what was in the guy's head and if he's going to do it again or not or if he's remorse or not or why he did it or if he's telling you what he's telling you is truth or bullshit I don't know any of that so you figure it out until next time Nardine says thank you a lot for your positive energy may God bless you and thank you Nardine too God bless you too your God bless you too uh, Rudrani said, can you explain, sir, what is true love? <laughs> you, you are the one who can explain that, uh, not me, really. And anyhow, uh, maybe next time we can discuss that. If you can ask that next time, we'll have maybe more time. Right now, we are out of time, and we best to stop it and before um, it gets too long. And Shamin... <laughs> thank you, Shamin. <laughs> thank you. And Don Diego says, thanks, Mehran, for your time. My pleasure, guys. I love you all, and thanks for being here. I hope you will have a wonderful week and handle things the way you do. And don't forget, do go on my Facebook page. The link is up there. And like it if you haven't yet so far, which obviously you're already there, so that's redundant. But do take a look at the animation that I've made. And do go on the... Um, the uh, site my site and see the uh, able to read some of the sample chapters and the table of contents and if you need to talk to me personally one-on-one -on -one, we'll book an appointment and we'll chat about what's on your mind and also go on my youtube channel and enjoy the videos that I put up there and do share the videos that you like on your social media so this will get more exposure for the channel and that will help other people to know that there is support and also they'll get to know about my work and that would be greatly appreciated and make sure that tune in tomorrow at the amazing things in the world facebook page uh, or next week at the same time same place and look forward to see you all there take good care of yourself and the others be good to yourself and the others and negotiate your life and your week and make sure you make the best of it and be positive at all times because that's the only choice we've got Love you all. Talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.